knowing that it is a land of greatness and of opportunities, as I came here as an immigrant until I became a citizen in 2008. I didn't know the importance of being a citizen in America until I had the greatest loss this year, 10 months ago, which I will talk to you about. So as I continued on, I was so dedicated to succeed in being proficient in speaking English. I had tutoring lessons, and I was the highest scoring student in all of my English classes, honors, and advanced. That is what I call dedication, mental resolve, purpose, and resiliency all in one. I say that because children are not only easily absorbing information, but their mental resolve is so proficient at a tender age that they are fearless. And I was fearless. I was the first, <laughs> I was possibly the first child in my family to go in the front seat of a roller coaster being five to six years of age with my hands up. I was the first person to go on the 123rd floor of the Chicago Sky Deck fearlessly, zip lining fearlessly. I'm not afraid of heights, skydiving as well. What I want to tell you is resiliency is something that is built over time. From my childhood until now, being 27 years of age. Resiliency is not convenient. Resiliency is power, passion, confidence, and consistency all into one. Resiliency. I didn't know what this term meant until this year. When I was involved with a man while I was teaching overseas because I found my passion and my healing in children. You ask why. I bet you're asking why. Raise your hand if you're asking why. I'm asking why. Awesome. Uh, Thank you, Fernanda. <laughs> All right. So I found my resiliency when I became involved and impulsively engaged to a narcissistic man. And I led to flee 10 months ago from today, impregnated with twins, mm. homeless, no money to eat, and no food in my belly. There was no one to help me save myself but myself alone. There was no one else responsible for my life but myself. Raise your hand if you've been in a situation like this before. There is greatness inside of you. The only reason I survived is because I had that resiliency and mental resolve and faith. That's right. Life is deceiving. You have to feed your faith and not your fear. That's right. I was fearless because I wanted to save my children and save myself. You have to care about yourself or no one's going to care about you in this world. Right. No one cared what I was going through. No one cared that I was pregnant. Welfare, support systems, it doesn't matter. You can't raise greatness on welfare. Yeah. That's not what I wanted for my children. It's not what I wanted for my life. Bob Marley said, you don't know how strong you are until being strong is the only option that you have in your life. And I live it. And I lived it. That was just the beginning for me. But you know, I still made my dream come true when I was teaching children in Thailand. I cried tears of joy because I was able to impact children in poverty. I came from India with floods. I didn't have much. I wore handy downs. I had the same pair of pants and I got bullied. I was the ugly duckling in class. I had no voice because I'm from the South Asian culture and I was told that we have to keep quiet and shut our mouths. Mm. Women are inferior in Asia. I'm not. Mm. And I'm not afraid to voice myself on the wrongdoings that I believe are wrong from my perception. This is my life, and this is my journey, and no one should be able to tell you or I what to do with my life. To friends, family, and haters. They come crawling like creepy crawlers. So, as I came back this year, I made a promise to myself when I looked at the ultrasound picture of my child. And Lisa Nichols did the same. Raise your hand, how many of you know Lisa Nichols? Yeah. Amazing yeah. woman, so strong. Yep. I looked at the picture and I said, mommy is going to do great things. Mm -hmm. I made the decision to part with my twins because I was not in the mental space of my life to take care of these kids. And regardless of what others judge you as, for your decisions, they are your decisions alone. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks because they're not gonna be the ones raising your children, whatever situation you are in. So moving up to mental resolve, William James said, 
the great discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering the attitudes of their mind. Yeah. What are you teaching yourself? What books are you reading? What are you listening to on a daily basis? Yeah. I was able to transform my life because of Mr. Les Brown. Yeah. Not only this year, but eight years ago when I was having suicide ideations and I listened to this man through a friend and it changed my life, it kept me alive. Now, eight years later, I'm 27 years young. I heard, I heard of him possibly at 20. What a blessing. Because I don't know, eight years back, I was still here today. I used to make statuses saying, oh, I'm alive another year. So, Victor Franco, Vietnamese psychiatrist, said, regardless of the intellectual or physical abuse you've been subjected to, no one can cause you to think something you don't want to think. No one can cause you to believe something you don't want to believe. It is your responsibility. Your ability to respond to any situation in life, it is up to you and you alone. No one is going to do it for you. No one is going to save you. You have to save yourself. Raise your hand if you've been your own savior in your life. Amazing. You should pat yourself on the back because many people are not here today because they were weak-minded. Mm. They thought suicide was the only solution to their life because they let others define them, define their life circumstances. Circumstances is, are temporary. Suicide is a permanent solution. Mm. Suicide prevention is necessary. It is the second leading cause of death globally, and it's increasing during the pandemic along with domestic violence. Mm. I myself am a survivor of sexual, physical abuse, and all sorts of things that people should never go through. And I'm still standing here today, being 27, standing on this platform as a woman because 200 million girls are killed in Asia for being born a girl or gone missing because they're a girl. Simple as that, nothing more to it. They're a burden. I'm not a burden. I'm here to change lives. You hear me? Yeah. And I'm gonna leave you with this quote by Malcolm X, the great Malcolm X. He had a voice too, just like all of us. He said, don't be in a hurry to condemn he who doesn't do as you do, think as you do, or as fast. There was a time where you didn't know what you know today, and neither did I. I learned from my experience, I applied it, and I dedicated my life to self-development and being a better person. And no one else can take that from you but yourself. Thank you. Yeah.